Okay, so is one better than the other? Which one should you get? Uh, did one company do one particular thing a hell of a lot better than the other one? Let's find out. We'll have a look. You got the Hot Toys 1 4 scale Dark Knight from The Dark Knight Rises and the Enterbay 1 4 scale Batman from The Dark Knight, even though everyone kind of just tends to think of it as the Batman Begins Batman, which is absolutely right because he's in the film in this suit for like two little quick scenes in The Dark Knight and then he switched over to this uh, outfit. So um, we'll start off in a minute with uh, getting the two Bruce Wayne head sculpts. We'll get the Enterbay and the Hot Toys really close up and have a nice little look at the two of them. Uh, see what's going on there. As far as the belts go, the belt war between these two, someone is definitely winning that war. Um, I'm sure you can already figure that one out, but we'll get to that too. So I'll try and get some poses. I'll get poses out of this guy. I'm not going to mess with him too much, but this guy, he's uh, he's still new, so we'll get busy with him. So enjoy and get comfy, because it might be a long one. should just briefly point out that this is the Enter Bay cape that originally came with him. He's now wearing a custom black velvet cape. Uh, and the only time you're going to see the Hot Toys cape is when it holds it up now and just say it's horrible. The system, the way it attaches, it's awkward. You risk breaking something. It's just absolute nightmare. I don't know. I don't like this cape. It didn't last two minutes on the figure. I didn't even attach it properly. I just gave up and decided to put the Enter Bay one on. Thanks to Wayne's Butler, I should mention, who did that before me. Uh, Curtis out there in Canada. Uh, his channel's called Wayne's Butler. He, uh, was the first one that I know of to stick the Enterbay cape on the Dark Knight and it definitely looks cool. Okay, so you've got the Enterbay Bruce Wayne head on the left and the Hot Toys Bruce Wayne on the right. Now, I guess it's pretty damn close between these two. There are certain angles where I, uh, I'm just, you know, not 100% sure that it's, you know, bang on, dead accurate. Um, whereas this one, when I took it out of the box, uh, I pretty much, as soon as I got it out and sort of turned it around to see the angles, it's perfect, you know. The only thing I don't like is when you put on the armor, it does leave behind this black sticky crap. And I can't get rid of it now, so be very careful because the armor attachment will leave behind this um, grimness. <laughs> You've got the younger Bruce Wayne as well, because this is... Mm, see, when Inspey did this, it's from the Dark Knight movie, but maybe they just, you know because that's the license they had, but when they did this they were basing it more on Batman Begins. It does look uh, younger. So, uh, Also worth mentioning, the Interbay one seems to have green eyes, uh, which I don't think is accurate. I think his eyes are brown, uh, which the Hot Toys does have. So uh, the mole is more prominent on the Interbay. It's almost not there on the Hot Toys from what I can see here. You can make out a little something, but they've really been kind. Uh, the hair, I prefer... Well, I don't know. I kind of prefer the Interbay hair sculpt. Even though they're both, you know, as good as each other. More of a five o'clock shadow on the Hot Toys, but that's enough of that. You've seen them. Just, well, decide for yourself. What do you think? The Interbay... Or the Hot Toys. I'm going to go with the Hot Toys on this one. Let's just compare two of the cowls. You've obviously got the Hot Toys Dark Knight cowl here and the Enterbay cowl here. Now the thing about these two is they both have interchangeable mouth plates that can go in, change the expression. Uh, but Enterbay gave us uh, three separate cowls all with painted eyes in different positions. Uh, whereas Hot Toys just gave us, well, they gave us two cows, we'll get to that in a minute, but one main sort of, you know, eyeballs showing, mouth plates, you know, one main cow uh, with the PERS system. Well, might not be called PERS anymore, because they've actually gone with, uh, and I believe Enterbay did this first with, um, I'm not too sure, I think it was Game of Death, Bruce Lee, maybe. They had these sticks that were part of the eyeball, and you could move them independently. I was thinking, which one of these, if I had to choose, looks more realistic? I guess, I don't know, I mean the purrs, or the sort of, you know, the separate eyes in the Hot Toys, they do give more of a realistic look, but then again, I still think the Enterbay eyes are just fantastic, they're really, really well done. But as far as realism, which one looks like it could be a, you know, a shrunken down Christian Bale, they're both right on the level, but I might give it to Hot Toys. Just because of the more glassy looking eyes and the fact that you can move them around wherever you want. You can even, you know, because they're independent, you can give them cross eyes. Um, it's really crude, man. I had to tie mine up with a bit of string to get it to hang at the right height. 
Um, it's a bad design. It's not good. It seems like an afterthought. You got the. Oh, that's like a. Yeah, that's not good. So that's that. <laughs> um, the belt. Entebay won't be winning on that one. But they are magnetizers, There's little magnets that um, attach in the back. And I had to re glue every single magnet into every little accessory all over again because they kept dropping out and they weren't really secure. And that was a pain in the butt. And uh, I'll show you the Hot Toy system in a minute, it's much better than this. Uh, but while it looks fantastic, it's nice and it feels kind of sturdy, it's not metal. Uh, but then again, neither is the Hot Toys one. Um, but they both look quality, but uh, at the back, it's not the case on this one. And as I say, I had to re glue all of them. That shouldn't have to happen. Now, the Hot Toys belt spanks it. The accessories basically uh, come on and off really easy. There's these little sort of hinges or clamps on the top and the bottom. You just literally um, pop it on, and there you go, you're good to go. No uh, magnets falling out on you. Uh, they give you some cool stuff. Where's that one that changes into the uh, little drill? Uh, where's that? Oh, here we go. Yes, opens up. Pop that out. Fingerprints. Going to the dentist. Makes me think of the dentist straight away. Not good. Um, so yeah, I would give the, uh, as far as the belt war, between the uh, one fourth Hot Toys Batman and one fourth Enzo Bay Batman, I put that on the wrong way up, uh, definitely Hot Toys are taking that one. Now uh, I'll show you the back as well. Do, 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 do. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so it's just literally simple stuff. Pops in and out. Really nice. Job done. Nice protective uh, sort of foam. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Enterbay one has some kind of foam underneath as well, to be honest. Um, but yeah, let me just move that out of the way. Very nice belt, and I love the way uh, these attach and reattach. Really simple to do. So, yep, the Hot Toys belt, much better. I'll just show you guys a bit of a height comparison. I took the capes off and uh, obviously got rid of the bases. Uh, so we can just get an idea. Now, there's not much in it. The Hot Toys body, at least, is smaller, shorter than the Enterbay one, even though the cowls seem to be the same proportions and the Bruce Wayne heads both seem to be the same size, which kind of doesn't really make sense from the Hot Toys point of view. I mean, I've checked and the Enterbay one, some people have said that the legs are too long. I'm looking at them and I really don't think they are too long. Uh, if anything, I think maybe the Hot Toys legs are a little bit short or something in the midsection or something is just a little bit, uh, I don't know, out of proportion possibly. Uh, now, Hot Toys clearly didn't want us to display these two figures together. They made that decision and they decided to make their one-fourth scale figures slightly smaller than Enterbase. And Enterbase one-six scale figures are always slightly bigger than um, the Hot Toys one-six scale figures like the Men in Black. Uh, I noticed with them, both of them were just all over proportion wise, just slightly bigger than Hot Toys. Uh, same with the Bruce Lees and stuff like that. So, as I say, Hot Toys clearly don't want us to display these two figures together. Perhaps they have their own plans for a Batman Begins uh, 1 4 scale figure in the near future. They'll probably do that Joker as well. And a Bane would be nice. But um, yeah, I do prefer, that's why I go for the 1 4 scale figures, because I want a big figure. And the Enzo one, even though it doesn't look like there's much in it here. The camera is, this is as high as I can get the tripod to go. We are looking at them from slightly below. Uh, I wish we were like dead on level eye with them. And you, then you would see the Enterbay is just bigger. Um, it's, it's not a big deal. Once they're both on their bases, uh, you can see they're both same level, same everything. Everything's fair. I'll lift up the camera for a minute so you can just get a look. See, there is a fair bit of difference there. And the fact that the um, the Hot Toys cowl is the same sort of size and proportions as the Enterbay one, at least they seem to be, you never know, might be misjudging that, but they seem the same size to me, so it makes me think that they either purposefully made the body slightly out of proportion so that they could have this shorter look so that you wouldn't display them together, and if you did display them together, it wasn't going to look right, so that's what they look like. Maybe uh, 
Turn them to the side a bit. Yep, definitely a bit more beef coming from this side. Now, I'm not sure if it's because I've had the Interbay uh, Batman a lot longer than I've had the Hot Toys, uh, but the Hot Toys one seems more of a uh, fresh new black, and I'm pretty sure that is just down to time, to be honest. I don't have a display case to put my 1 4 scale figures in, or my, uh, most of my 1 6 scale figures, so they have to stay outside and have to clean them as much as possible. Um, uh, I, mm, I don't know. The, uh, the Interbay boots are definitely thicker and tougher than these Hot Toys ones, like when I'm pressing here I can feel the space uh, in between the uh, the boot and the actual foot of the figure. Um, the Interbay one is tougher and there's not much space between this, the, the uh, boot and the foot. They're both nice, I think it is literally just down to the fact I've had this like a year now, uh, not in a case, uh, and this one literally just turned up like two days ago or something. So it's really fresh and new. I mean, it still smells like a new figure, so... Uh, I'm gonna just say both the boots on these guys are awesome. Maybe uh, if I'm if I'm wrong about the time that these just are a slightly more sort of muted black, then I'd go for the Hot Toys ones. But I like the thickness of the Enterbay ones. They feel more tough. Just have a quick look at them side by side here. Um, the knee pads on the Dark Knight by Hot Toys, this one especially, is really going off to this direction. I've turned the leg, I've tried messing with it, but it always ends up going back that way. Uh, like his kneecap's been knocked over the other, wrong side of his leg, but yeah, that's a small thing. It doesn't really jump out at me when I'm looking at him on display. Uh, but as I say, I have tried to futz with it and turn the leg and try and get that to be you know, where it's meant to be, like here. Um, into B ones, totally different systems, so I mean they're just part of the suit. Not much comparing there to be honest. Um Yeah, that's them. They are level. And that's the sizes. And the height. I've got this light up here trying to get the light on the suits for you. It's creating that annoying shadow, but I'm going gorilla style here guys trying to, you know get this video done for you. Um, I mentioned in my first impressions that this was softer than I thought it would be. It's alright, it's, it's pretty much what it should be really. I mean if you want to be able to move it, uh, move his chest, move his midsection, then that's how the, that needs to be. It's very well done though. There is a lot of, um, you know, you can really... I've had him in some pretty twisty turny poses. There's a lot of fun to be had posing him. Um, Posability wise, I would give it to the Hot Toys. Uh, just because of the, I don't know, you can you can just do more with this one. You can do pretty much what you want to do with the Enter Bay Batman, but I would definitely give it to the Hot Toys just for overall fun factor and just things feel a little bit more uh, <sighs> tough as far as joints and uh, well, there's basically like they both have ratchet, you know, arms, but that doesn't feel as responsive. And you can hear this, and it's like a double jointed elbow as well, so you can really get that up there. <laughs> but this one, I can feel already, it will go up more, but it's starting to fight against me. I'm like, nah, I don't want to mess with that. So, uh, if the Hot Toys could raise his middle finger right now, I think he would. Okay, time to hit it from the back. Uh, let's see, now try to ignore the horrible mess that is the back of the Interbee belt there. And look at the lovely, snugly, tightly, um, efficiently made loveliness of the uh, Hot Toys belt. Uh, this at the back, with all this sort of, it kind of looks like there's a, a section of padding here or something. Um, yeah, very spongy when I touch that. There's uh, something going on underneath that, but um, yeah, from the back, very different. So. Uh, yeah, your guess is as good as mine as to which one might be better, but um, hmm. maybe less is more, you know, there's a lot going on here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So that's what that looks like from the back. The shoulders, uh, hmm. 
Yeah, definitely more animal like beastly. See the sort of the lines going down on this one. Not so much. Alright, so let's show you how easy it is putting this on. Just pull it down a little bit, lift it out, and there you go. It's really easy to take off and just as easy to put on. You just got to slip that in there. Oops. Slip that in there. Go on. And then just literally, that's done. Bosh. Hong Kong jump. Batman. Sorry again that you can see that. That's annoying me seeing that little hook, but it's one fourth scale. Usually the camera's a lot lower. Uh, so I can get the nice just plain background, but I'm working with the big 1-4 figures now, so I'm gonna have to find a new space. Maybe if I... Nah. Well. Anyway, the main point was to show you how the, uh, the backpack goes on. Alright, let's talk about the base. Um, now, the base for the Hot Toys figure definitely takes it again, because it's actually like an environment... Uh, nice little diorama, well, I don't know if you call it that, but it's it's nice to look at, it's actually something rather than the just bring it over here, we'll just keep this brief the Enter Bay one is basically just silver with the Dark Knight logo and the Batman uh, plate there and you've got a nice screw feature, very nice but that's about as um, interesting as that gets now uh, the only thing I'm not too keen on with this is just how awkward it is to actually get Batman to sort of stand comfortably on here uh, it can be done obviously it's it's designed for a certain kind of leg position you got the one leg down here on the uh, flat surface and you can either have the other one up on the rocks or placed in this nice little section here but it is a bit of a pain in the butt to do and I would like to just be able to have him just stand his straight legs you know just straight down uh, nice and simple uh, the masks that come with it it's nice that they do come uh, with the figure but I have to say the scarecrow one um, it's a bit underwhelming, it's not really painted that well. Uh, on camera it might look okay, uh, serve its purpose sort of thing, but in hand, as soon as I got this in my hands I kind of realised how sort of cheap it feels and looks. Uh, I'm really not that impressed with this Scarecrow mask, so, I mean it's just a extra thing. Uh, the Bane mask, uh, the piping isn't really, well, I don't know, maybe that's just age and weathering. Uh, but it looks like they just basically forgot to paint some of it. Now I'm pretty sure, even with time and weathering, uh, these would still be silver. These, you know, the pipes that come at the front here. Uh, nice detail on the rips where it's been torn off his face. Uh, it's a nice mask, but I just a little bit sort of underwhelmed with the paint job on it, as you can see. They might vary. Maybe someone out there has one that's painted better than this, who knows. Uh, the Joker mask, whoop, there goes Bane. Uh, but this is painted well, it feels like a little real mask. Hasn't got the sort of strap though. But yeah, that's cool. The uh, yeah, little extra bits here, you can place that wherever you want. And the um, bit of scaffolding that just clips in there, much like the uh, Superman 1-6 uh, scale. With the Fortress of Solitude, they kind of stick in, uh, but this one does need to be heated up. I haven't done that yet, so it only kind of partially goes in. Uh, but the nameplate, nice. And the detail on the rocks, very nice. I would have preferred, like I said in the initial thoughts video, uh, like a nice catwalk from the fight with Bane, uh, with some steps, or maybe the steps again from the end of the movie. I would have preferred, because it's actually from the Dark Knight, this scene. Um, but yeah, Wayne's Butler. A mention for him again, he actually did make the catwalk, um, not all of it, but just part of it for a diorama for his uh, one fourth scale Dark Knight figure. Check it out, it's awesome, Wayne's Butler's channel. So a quick look at the sonar head, now these lights are very bright. Um, yeah, they're just super bright, which is really cool. Um, there's no other thing to say really, they are a lot brighter than anything I've ever seen Hot Toys do before as far as LEDs and a head go. Uh, let's try some mouth pieces or mouth plates. Just stick them in a little bit. Um, that's the one that's kind of like sort of talking, relaxed mouth sort of thing. This one is definitely saying something or just getting punched in the stomach. And my favourite, and probably a lot of people's favourite uh, mouth plate, the uh, angry one. Very nice. Grr.
I'll show you the looks with the different mouth plates. This is your just your neutral mouth, eyes looking straight forward. Very nice. Now I'll move the eyes to the side a bit. Very nice. There's that angry mouthpiece. It's probably my favourite. A lot of fun for taking the pictures. It's a seriously cool sculpt. What's always loving the teeth at the moment, they uh, pumping out a lot of figures with teeth showing. I remember the days when we were asking for that and now we have it. And here we go with just his uh, sort of relaxed mouth or sort of mid-sentence. I'm not sure what, uh, what this one is supposed to be but it is one of the ones I like a lot. Again with the teeth. Really nice eyes just looking sort of slightly up now. Now changing the hands over on the one four scale Dark Knight is a pleasant experience which is uh, a nice pleasant surprise. With the Enter Bay Batman I have to say uh, that's a bit of a pain in the ass to change those hands over lately. I've had to get the hair dryer out and no one wants to have to do that. But with the Hot Toys one you can see now just a little twisty twisty and it's off. New one. Little twisty 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 and it's on. There you go. We've just changed hands. Let's get this one off because I've uh, I've got to start doing some poses now. It's been a lot of uh, technical talk and not much action, so we'll get to that in a sec. But yeah, there's the hands. All changed over, and he's like, what's the big deal? <laughs> I know it's not going to happen, but I suppose I might as well try on camera just so we can see. Changing over the uh, Interview Batman hands. Oh shit, okay. Well that came off easier than I thought it would. Uh, and I didn't think it would come off that easy, so I'm not prepared and I haven't got... Oh, I have. I am prepared. Which hand am I putting on? Let's just put on a fist. Will this be easy? I'm really having to press and twist. He is going on. needs a bit of work, it's on there but it just uh, needs to be wrestled with a bit more but it was definitely easier to change over the hands on the Hot Toys figure just so you know. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys the simple way that I attach the Enter Bay cape. Uh, you want to just stuff enough of the end of the cape into this hole down here like so. That is well and truly deep. Now there it goes, that's the cape, it's in there, I can even pull on it. It ain't going no place unless I want it to. So that's how I'm swapping over the uh, cape, uh, just so you can see that. Now the posability on this guy is fantastic. Uh, the waist turns, you can adjust pretty much everything. Uh, the ankles are fantastic, they do everything you want them to do. Uh, really got no complaints with the posability, not one damn thing I can say that's bad. Um, just tried to raise the arm up, it's not a very natural. Uh, reach here for his uh, grapnel gun to shoot out but I was just trying to show you that the arm it could probably go up even more than this as a ratchet and when you're turning it um, you can just hear it going and going it's not a scary sort of crunching sound like I'm used to with other figures but it's um, yeah it's very easy to get him in a nice pose and he can do pretty much anything I'll see what else I can get out of him now but uh, you can get him into some really action-packed stuff Nice weight to him, the feet are really sturdy, nice tough ankles. No base required really, but for safety reasons, you know, just you want to use a base, I guess. But that's very nice. And something that I only noticed when I saw, um, it was like a p photograph of uh, Christian Bale and Tom Hardy on set, and they were doing the fight scene in, the, uh, in Bane's lair, and Batman was throwing a punch, and it was only when I saw that picture I realised that these shoulder plates on the arm are here, they're two separate pieces. Uh, I didn't know that until recently, so, and it's nice that Hot Toys have actually done that as well. Usually it's just one piece, but now it's actually uh, two separate. That uh, gives you more maneuverability and it's awesome. These are in the right place now, at last. 
uh, mentioned about the belt much much better than anything uh, that's come before really functions well um, these are hard plastic like they usually are uh, whereas this part is more soft sort of pliable but the actual uh, gauntlet fins they're quite hard they don't bend um, the enter bay ones they do bend they're like soft I guess to avoid them snapping uh, but I would have preferred them to be hard I guess and he's a bit drunk now he wants to fall over just stand up uh, yeah very nice quick shot like this just to show you that's about as far as you want to get his legs apart I know that sounds weird but um, I think it says so in the instructions as well but you don't want to go any more than that because the material could start to rip um, but the posability as I said is fantastic just arm straight out no problem just did that easy they're not going down again that's good news um, yeah posability 9 out of 10 definitely And whenever I'm doing a fighting pose, I always end up going for the angry mouth plate. I know it's a bit predictable, but I just uh, I do like it. Now with the DX12, when I did the Bane vs. Batman fight video, uh, I didn't mind getting the DX12 wet. I had a little uh, bottle of spray and just sprayed some water, just regular old water on the DX12. It didn't do any damage whatsoever, but it made the photos look amazing. Uh, I I don't think I'll be doing that with this big guy. He's a uh, too expensive and too awesome. I don't want to risk it, so I'll be keeping the water off this one. It's a nice little pose there. Uh, the EMP gun um, is pretty damn awesome. It's the same setup as the DX12 one, so it's just got that one sort of bright LED or one big LED in there somewhere, or just this little, f yeah, however the hell that works. But um. <laughs> Uh, the pose isn't that great, it's a bit of an awkward pose to try and get in, into. I know what I wanted him to do with this, but it's, uh, it's a matter of really spending some time uh, messing with him, trying to get him in that perfect pose where you first see him in the Dark Knight Rises. He should be up higher, uh, he should be leaning in, sort of looking down the line of the gun. Um, but just want to move on and uh, get this weapon out of the way and over with, because I wasn't looking forward to posing him with it. Um, it would look much better sort of held up kind of uh, you know up by his head there like he's just fired it and he's getting ready to put it away but uh, it is an awesome accessory it does come with a lot of stuff this guy so uh, it is a cool weapon glad it's there it took me ages to figure out how to turn it on I mean I know where the switch is it's underneath here but you've got to remove uh, a section here pull it away and then remove the tab and then you can turn it on I was looking everywhere for the instructions thinking how the hell do I turn on the EMP <laughs> Yeah, that's the sort of thing I was talking about. I mean, it looks awesome from the side. Very nice. I'll just get you a little close-up of the sticky bomb gun. Uh, it does come apart and fold back up into the two parts, but it doesn't stick to the belt this time. No magnets to hold it in place. Maybe this time around it'd be too heavy. Uh, but it did stick to the belt on the DX02 Dark Knight 1-6 scale figure by Hot Toys, but this time around, the 1-4 scale, it will not stick to the belt. Spend a couple of seconds looking at some Batarangs. Now, these are the Interbay ones. I've had these a while. I do take care of them. But they're starting to um, get some scuffs on them now, just from time. Uh, they are plastic, um, and they are just painted gold. Uh, here's a bigger one that folds. Very nice. Again, it's plastic though, just painted gold. Now, uh, the Hot Toys ones. I don't know if you can hear that. But they're metal and very sharp. Awesome. They're literally uh, one fourth scale versions of the Bat Rings. Uh, and they're metal this time, there's no insignia or logos on the back of them. I do like that. So the Hot Toys Bat Rings spank it like a naughty baby. Okay, and here we have the Hot Toys grapnel gun and the Enterbay grapnel gun. Now they are, hmm, are they the same size? Let's see, uh, which one's which? Right, that's the Enterbay, and that is bigger and has a longer barrel and is a different kind of gold. It's more of a bronze and uh, yeah, it's a lighter color and smaller. The Hot Toys Enterbay, Hot Toys Enterbay. So yeah, difference. There is. Uh, they both 
can cock, uh, but uh, Hot Toys 1 sort of goes back by itself, will only go back a little bit, and Bay 1, you do it yourself. Um, which one do I like more? I don't know, it doesn't really matter. They're both just grapnel guns to me, but I'd, hmm, I don't know which one's more accurate. I don't know whether it's meant to be the smaller version or the bigger version, so I honestly can't say. They're both slightly different, but both pretty damn cool. Well guys, to sum it all up, uh, I've had a few messages and some people wanted to know uh, which one of these they should get. Uh, I think it really does come down to which suit you prefer the most. Um, as far as which figure, all in all, um, is just better made. Uh, I'd go with the Hot Toys one. It's just, so far, apart from the horrible cape, uh, it's problem free, you know, uh, all the accessories work as they're meant to do, the belt functions great, all the accessories go on the belt really well, the posability with him is fantastic, um, the purse system, or I don't know if they still call it a purse system now, but the eye moving system is uh, a lot better off now, a lot easier to use, a lot less stressful and worrying. Um, yeah, it's awesome, it's a work of art, so is this one. Uh, but Interbay, uh, the Interbay Batman has a couple of little issues, like the belt uh, sits a bit high. You have to do, you know, your own little mods to get that to sit where it's meant to. Um, the cape pegs—that's uh, a very easy fix. You literally just have to move some stuff around with your fingers, but uh, you can get that into the right position, no problem. Uh, the Interbay Batman is great for poses as well, but I did find the Hot Toys uh, Batman a lot easier to work with, a lot less stressful. Uh, to work with than the Interbay one when it came to the extreme poses. Um, what else can I say? <laughs> Depends which suit you like more. Uh, as far as if there was a score concerned, I ain't giving them scores, but I will tell you the Hot Toys Batman takes it. Um, fantastic figure. Uh, I still love my Batman Begins all the way. I'm more about the beastly look, so I'm always going to prefer this one, but I know that this one is a slight step up. Uh, just as far as, just all round package. Very well done. Uh, just give you a quick look in case you're wondering, the Enterbay cape that's on the Dark Knight does have the V in the back. And it's just the right size as well, which works out nice. So, I hope you've enjoyed the little comparison. Um, as far as which one, like I said, just depends which suit you like more, I guess. Uh, they are fantastic figures. I ha have a special place in my heart for the Enterbay Batman, not just because it's the favourite suit of mine, but uh, Interbay trusted me enough um, to send me the Interbay Batman as a sample so that I could work with it and show it in the best way I possibly could and hopefully convince enough of you guys out there to buy it. And I counted the emails, there was about 47 emails that specifically told me that people bought the Batman by Interbay because of me. So um, I think I'd done my job and I'll continue to push the Enterbay Batman in people's faces because <laughs> I just wish more people had it. It's awesome. Uh, I was super happy when I saw Rick review it. That was a dream come true. Uh, I hope more people can get their hands on one of these guys. I mean, whichever one, you know. Uh, the one six scale stuff, you know, is amazing, but these one fourth scale figures, man, is just another level. Um, so, yeah, thanks to Enterbay for making my dreams come true and giving me this Batman to work with and trusting me with it. Uh, as far as I know, I was the only person to get the Enterbay Batman as a sample. Even the big guys out there who've been going for years who have their own websites didn't even get one of these bad boys. So that's a point of pride for me. I love the beast. I will always fly his flag high. But uh, as far as which one wins the day, technically the Hot Toys is going to take it because it's just a little bit, I don't know, a little bit easier to work with. But they're both fantastic figures. Whichever suit you like more, go for that one. Thanks for watching it, guys. Uh, more stuff on the way. If there's anything else you want to see about these guys, let me know. I'll get that happening.